But we're moving on to sports now, and like I mentioned, about 40 years, 1982 to 2022. Uh, <laughs> 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 Look, it's, it's, it's been, I don't know what to call it, but we've always come this close, but Very no, close. no, no, no farther. We did Very in, close. was it? Uh, Senegal 92. Senegal 92, AFCON uh, 2010, AFCON 2015. We've come this close. But interestingly, I think it was 2010 when we had a crop of players that we didn't really suspect young, would make it to the finals. Really young, yeah. But they did. Yeah. Do you see that happening this year? I mean, for AFCON 2021, because we missed it. Milo Van Rijver says that um, being tagged as underdogs is a plus for him and his team, and they're going to cause a surprise. So we are hoping that they can do so. A surprise like a few days ago against Algeria no, or no, something no. else? Okay, so that game was more of a preparatory match. Mm. One that he wanted to see what um, he could give out to the general public when the main competition starts on Sunday and when the Black Stars starts their campaign today. So I think that it was an opportunity for him to find out whether in the absence of some of the core players he's got, the youngsters he gave an opportunity to play against Algeria, they can step up. And indeed, though it was an awful performance, I think that um, some of them showed that when they are given an opportunity to join the best players he's got, those he has confidence in, they can deliver. The likes of jo uh, Joseph Pencil, the likes of uh, Fatah Isahaku, mm -hmm. Edmond Ado, these players. When they Isahaku did well on the day. Yeah, he did very well. He gave an opportunity. They, they can always fit in. And you read from Cambodia, who take us through the memory lane. Funny enough, he's one of the two journalists who are, st who are still alive. Um, out of the seven journalists that went to cover the African Cup of Nations in 1982. That is a whole 40 years. Solid 40 years. Think about the wealth of experience. But right, right before you go, you, you must get into the sports and you'll give us the details. What's your prediction for tonight? I'm putting you on the spot. Ghana, Morocco. What's going to be your prediction? Ghana will win. By what margin? The margin I cannot tell. Is this realism or patriotism? It's realism. Realism? Yes. All right, take it away, Muftar. Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us for AM Sports. I am Muftar Nabila Abdullah. Let's start from the camp of the Black Stars of Ghana, where Milovan Rivaj has said that the decision of many to tag Ghana as underdogs in this year's African Cup of Nations is actually a plus for him and his boys because they're not under any pressure to deliver. However, they are better placed to surprise everyone. Yeah, COVID is a serious issue these days. And uh, I, I've seen that some of the teams had problems and uh, this can affect the teams very much in this competition. For us, we, we did our PCR test yesterday and everybody is okay. So we don't have any problems and we hope it will stay that way in the future. I protiv Maroka, ovaj, tako da to je iza nas, a ta utakmica nam je poslužila da vidimo ono što smo mi htjeli. You know that uh, this situation with the uh, new rules that players should stay in the clubs totally affected our game preparations and we're supposed to play two matches before Algeria match but these matches had to be cancelled since we didn't have many players. Even many players arrived just day or two before Algeria match, you know, and it was uh, these circumstances were, you know, so difficult for everybody. But uh, at the end, you know, this this is in the past, and we got from this match what we wanted. Uh, we are feeling confident. We know what we can do, and we are very positive about the about the next match because we always think for the future. So um, this is something that we really are focused on now. Nema potrebe da, 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 su oni, ovaj, da se oni opterećuju, jednostavno da ćemo sve od sebe da uh, uzmemo taj trofej uh, i nema nazbiljnih povreda za sada. We, did, we don't have any serious injury issues uh, in our team uh, about expectation and uh, uh, people should be positive, you know, because they shouldn't think about this previous match as something important. Competition starts today. For us, it starts tomorrow. So we are taking one step at a time. We have full faith uh, in everybody around us. In uh, Players are ready to go and we have the quality. We have the uh, passion for this, you know. We are dedicated. We know how important it is for all Ghanaians. For us, every next match is the important match, it's the most important match. So first we are thinking 
about uh, playing this group stage and going to the next stage so every next we will just uh, focus when when the time comes and we will all we are all aware how important it is for Ghanaians but for all of us you know this is something that we are very passionate about so we will do everything we can to make everybody in Ghana happy nobody considers us as favorites even before the competition but we are we are to 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 try to prove them wrong we it's good for us and how will the black stars prove the rest of the world wrong and Ghanaians wrong well my colleague George Adegina was at the training grounds of the team and came through with this report. So an important session for coach Billy Van Ryavach and his boys at the Majwa Hijo Stadium next after what has been a rather topsy-turvy preparation for the Black Stars ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations 2021. Yes, they moved into Qatar to prepare but they don't have the full complement of the team uh, because of uh, the agreement between FIFA, yes, the European clubs and CAF that were going to release the star players on January the 3rd. It meant that the team's preparation had been cut down to some four days of which they played a friendly against Algeria and they lost by three goals to nil. All day the Black Stars have looked very, very focused, especially at the press conference. Coach Bill Van Ryavet says there are no injury concerns in camp. Andrea Yu, the captain, says the Black Stars have been unlucky in recent years and that's why they have not been able to win the competition. Well, we're all aware the Black Stars are far off favourites to win this competition. They definitely fall in that surprise package and it's up to the Black Stars to show us what they really have got. We have been trying to find out what's going on in the mind of Milovan Ryavac ahead of this important game against Morocco tomorrow, which happens to be the Group C opener. At the press conference, he did indicate, yes, that Daniel Amate was played at right back only because Andy Adam did not arrive in camp, you know, very early enough to play that friendly against Algeria. Well, Philemon Bafo as well uh, was out there in Portugal trying to put together contracts. So. It gives us an indication that there may be changes at right back. In centre back, then maybe Daniel Lamate is going in with Jonathan Mensa. At left back, as always, Baba Roman is up and running and hoping to get the job done. In midfield, Thomas Pate probably alongside Baba Idriso. But knowing that Mubarak Castle is fit, there could always be a big shout for experience in there. Down the left hand side, Kamal Din Sulemana, the Ren man, is in. And so it's going to be a little bit of a fight between himself and Joseph Painso, who plays his football for Gang. Also on the right hand side, Fatar Sahaka, who picked up a knock in Algeria, in the Algeria friendly, is back and fit. And so it could be another little one there as well between himself and Jordan Ayu. There's obviously Dedi Ayu, and one of the strikers may just get an opportunity to play up front. The Moroccans strained earlier, and even though they're without their man, Hakim Ziyech, they look like a side that that could really pose a lot of problems. We're looking forward to that big game tomorrow, and it's going to be a special one. If the Black Stars are able to beat Morocco, it may just set off a fantastic campaign to what could be the end of uh, a, a very, very, very bad drought for the Black Stars, close to 40 years without an Africa Cup of Nations trophy. But the Moroccans will be also very eager to win this game because the last time they won it was in 1976. And if they can beat the Black Stars, who knows where this can end? George Ado Jr. reporting from the Stadium Next at the Amadou Ahiju Stadium. We'll be looking forward to that game between Ghana and Morocco. And that game is rather happening tonight. 4 p.m. is a kickoff when the Black Stars comes up against Morocco. An opponent they met during the 2008 African Cup of Nations when it's staged in Ghana. But still on the African Cup and the opening game happened and it was Cameroon who came up against Burkina Faso. Skipper of the team, Vincent Abubakar, scored twice from the penalty spot as the host came from behind to secure a 2 1 win. In the second game of the day, Cap Verde came up against Ethiopia, and the Ethiopians had received a red card in the first half, giving Cap Verde an opportunity to walk away with all maximum points by winning by one goal to zero. Three points for the host, three points for Cap Verde, zero points for Burkina Faso and Ethiopia, respectively. Next up today is Ghana versus Morocco. There's also going to be Senegal who will be in action as well as Malawi. These are the teams that we're playing today. But let's do some Ghana Premier League news where Kumasi Asante Kotoko once again extended an unbeaten run in a campaign to four matches after defeating Ashanti Gold in the Ashanti Derby by three goals to one, courtesy of a hat-trick from Imbela Etuga. 
Edge upon cross, missed by Ampim Da Costa. Here is him for again. Great defending from Osage man in the end. It's a penalty. In an attempt to stop the ball. The hand is not away from the body in an attempt to try and stop the ball. He's just throwing his stuff at it. There, look at the hand. Penalty for Kotoko. And Etuga makes it 1-0 for Kumasi Asante Kotoko. The Cameroonian in some rich vein of form. The penalty conceded by Ose Ajiman. And the Cameroonian makes no mistake. It's Kotoko Wana's goal near. Talk about confidence. He's in that mood at the moment. And Kotoko have the goal that he's just been craving for. But it's Kotoko who regained possession. It's a moral looking for Fuege. Ampim Da Costa. He's giving away the ball in Kotoko second. A double for Etuga. Mistake from Ampim Da Costa. It's a double for the Cameroonian. Frank Etuga is 2 0 here at the Babayara Stadium. And the pressure pays off from Fuege. Doesn't give up the chase and eventually wins the setting up a two guy. He wouldn't score a much more easier goal throughout his career than this one. Just a simple tapping into and and on guard a net, a brace for a two a two guy. It's not on a hat trick. Corner for Asante Kotoko. Imoro Ibrahim delivers. It's a two guys hat trick. A two guy has a hat trick. Oh boy, the Cameroonian is busting Kumasi. He's made it 3-0. An amazing hat trick for Frank Etuga. And Kumasi will forever remember this day for the Cameroonian. You, know, you need to keep an eye on your man. You need to stay to the task, stay with your responsibility. Because Etuga is instinctive. He's a striker who is always on the move. And yeah, he just pulls away from his man and it comes free. No goalkeeper is saving that. And Etuga. Has scored his first hat trick for Kotoko, first hat trick in the Ghana Premier League. Elijah Adai, bursting for the confidence. Here is Nkrumah. Can't send in a cross, but he finds Adai. Good play from Adai. Great goal. This is magical. And Asko that back in it. What a goal from Elijah Adai. Wow. That was a thumping hit. It really was. No glitches for them today. They'll be disappointed. But Asko really did work this one well. Have a few pass, great strength shown by Nkrumah, third of the plate. But there, that, that, that little skill to cap pass the Japan in the strike that followed was just ferocious. It was really well struck, well hit, right into the roof of the net. No chance for that lad on this one. Asante Kotoko walking away with the 3-1 win in the Ashanti Derby. And this is how we wrap up AM Sports here with me, Muftar Nabila Abdullah.